What's up YouTube, Kyle Leader, AKA Smooth Flipper. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I wanna go over what not to do when dealing with private buyers. Now this video came about um, based off of just my experience of dealing with people, you know, who send me phones, who send me invoices to buy their phones and all that. So I wanna, you know, give you guys uh, some tips on what not to do so when you are dealing with private buyers, things are very smooth and you know, you're not um, one of those type of sellers, you know, where your buyer doesn't really want to deal with you um, based off of your past experiences. So um, I'm going to jump into my computer right now, show you guys a little presentation on, on PowerPoint and kind of break it down for you. So let's get into it. All right, guys, so I'm on my computer right now. Uh, I'm going to show you guys this quick PowerPoint. But again, we're talking about what not to do when dealing with private buyers. So let's get into it. So the first thing is do not assume. Um, what I mean by that is what i've came across is a lot of you know sellers who who, who sell to me um they assume that i buy certain models you know my price sheet is you know iphone 7 and up i get a lot of invoices from people wanting to sell me iphone 6s iphone 6s pluses um and stuff like that things that aren't on my price sheet they invoice me for like i'm going to buy them and that's something that you don't want to do. If your buyer strictly buys iPhones or they do buy iPhones um, 7 and up or Samsung Galaxy S7 and up, then invoice them those. Don't go out and, and, and try to assume that they'll buy anyway um, because then you're probably going to lose money if you're expecting a certain price for it and they don't buy it. And it doesn't look good when you're invoicing those. Um, different models and they don't buy them. So again, guys, don't assume that they will buy the model, especially if it's not on the price sheet. Um, next, the condition. So, you know, every buyer you're going to deal with, um, legit buyers usually have a price sheet. You know, they usually break it down for, for people to make it a lot easier of what they buy, what they pay. Um, and then there's usually a section that goes over the grading of a phone. Um, and I, I get a lot of people who assume, you know, certain conditions are this and that. Like if you don't know what B grade is, if you don't know what an A grade phone looks like, um, then it's always, you know, buyers want you to contact them. If you can contact them, you know, um, and say, hey, I have this phone. Um, you know, if you don't understand the grading, the grading skill that they provided for you, then, you know, let them clear it up for you. If you, if you think you have an A grade phone, you show them a picture of it, they see a little scratch or they, or they kind of, you know, go more in detail of what, um, a grade actually is or what B grade actually is and you figure out, okay, this is probably a B grade phone and you already assumed it was an A grade, then, you know, it's important that you, you know, communicate with them that way. Um, don't just assume, hey, this is an A grade and, you know, you're, you're invoicing him for a bunch of A grades and he, you know, they receive them and then they come out to be B grade. So you, you want to always, you know, understand what, you know, the, the, these different grades are and then different buyers, they're just different. You know, there's some guys who I deal with, they're very picky as far as A grade. Um, even their B grade is, is, is pretty much A grade in my opinion, but they grade it differently. So you want to make sure that you understand their grading um, before you start sending them invoices and phones to then uh, realize that you're not getting the amount of money that you, you know, assumed. So don't do that. And then um, the, are you buying? So the, basically this means... Um, sometimes you're going to deal with buyers um, who ran out, they ran out of money sometimes. I've dealt with people who um, I've asked them, hey, I have this much, this many phones. Um, I'm going to send them your way. Whatever I say, they go, okay, wait, hold on. I'm currently not buying or I'm waiting for some money to come in. Um, and it's always good for you guys to talk beforehand so you're not – you know, caught, you know, by surprise, if you do pick up 10 phones, thinking you're going to move them to this buyer and come to find out he's not buying or he's not ready to buy any more uh, phones at the moment. So it's always good for you. Um, and it's going to save you a lot of money if you do, you know, communicate with them and, and not assume that they're going to buy everything. You know, don't, don't assume that they're going to take your 20 phones. Um, you know, sometimes they just don't buy them. So I always ask, you know, make sure, hey, are you, are you buying right now? Um, you know, just ask, just send them a quick, a quick little message and you should be good to go. But do not assume. Make sure you guys get all this down. Um, let's go on to the next one. Now, I put this in bold and I, I put this 
as the only thing on this on this particular uh, page, and that is do not send the invoice without actually having the item. Now I've had this happen maybe 10 times already um, from different people who invoice me a phone that they're either you know trying to buy, they don't have the money to buy it. So they so they invoice me so I can pay, they use that money to buy the phone, which is a, a big no. Uh, that's a no no for you guys who are in business and who want to you know maintain business with that particular buyer. And then I've also seen people um, try to try to build their capital fast that way where they say, okay, my, my buyer is paying 1050 for iPhone 10s maxes. Now, let me go find one or let me invoice them 1050 and try to find one for, for like 950. They, they, they go about it that way. And that's the wrong way to do it. Um, just because it's, it's a pain to, you know, if you don't find that item, you have to, you know, refund them back their money, which takes maybe a couple of days for it to get back into their account. And you're just, you're just messing up their flow of business by doing that. So again, do not send an invoice without actually having the item. You have the item, you have the IMEI, you know, in your possession, that's when you send the invoice, you know. Um, even if you're getting some phones in from Macari or another outside source, you know, they're being mailed to you. Don't send that invoice until you receive the package, you inspect it, and then you send it. Because again, um, there I've had times where, you know, somebody invoiced me uh, almost $6,000. I paid thinking I was going to, you know, be receiving these phones. Uh, a day later, they you know, refunded me that same money, but it took, you know, three or four days to get back into my account, which again, um, nobody wants to deal with having those, you know, having funds tied up just because that person invoiced you without actually having an item. So don't do this guys. It's very important. Um, and it doesn't look good as, you know, someone who wants to do business with you because, uh, it's just not a good business decision and it's just not good business in general. Um, it doesn't look good, so don't do that. And lastly, I want to go over this. Um, basically, is communication. This is this is probably one of the most important parts of it. You know, and this not a lot of people have this notion where you know they send the phone off and then that's it. They get their money. That's it. They they they're done. Um, I'm big on communicating. You know, um, and that's just communicating the prices again. Like I said in the previous uh, slides. Um, Communicating the prices, making sure you're going to actually get the price for the phone. Um, you guys want to communicate when you do get the money. Now it's time to ship. Now the shipping portion of it is important because, you know, as a buyer, for me, I want to know where my where my package is. I want to know when my package will arrive. Now, if I'm dealing with a lot of people, it's going to be hard for me to go back to every tracking number and make sure I understand, okay, this package is coming tomorrow. This package is coming today. Um, that's just painful for me. So if you're sending the package, I feel like it's, it's you know, it's courteous for you to say, you know, give little updates to, you know, the, your buyer saying, hey, the package should arrive today. It's out for delivery. Or the package got delayed. It should be there tomorrow. Or, you know, whatever the case may be, you should be up to, up to date on the, the tracking information um, and you should be, you know, relaying that same message that USPS is sending you or whatever you're using. Um, that, that you know, particular information that they're sending you, you send right to your buyer. And they appreciate that. They want to they wanna know because, um, you know, it's just, it's, just good to, it's just good to know. Sometimes where I've been, you know, out without having any commu communication with the seller that sold me their phones, um, you know, they told me they put signature, uh, signature tracking on the phones and I wasn't there, you know, if I was now, I wasn't there due to you know, my choice, but if I knew, okay, I have packages that's coming in today. Um, I'm going to hold off on whatever I have to do and then wait for the packages, sign the packages and then do what I have to do for the rest of the day. It's just important. It's, it's just important that you guys do that. And then again, go over when the package is out for delivery and when it does deliver you know you want to be on top of it all um 100 100 every step of the way for your buyer just make it easier for them that, that's the whole goal because a lot of buyers are dealing with thousands and thousands of units a week 
where, you know, although you are just somebody giving them phones, you want to have that kind of um, connection and relationship between you guys because you guys are doing business. It's not it's not good to have, you know, especially exchanging phones and money um, and you have no idea who this person is. You guys don't have um, a, a business relationship or expectations for business with each other. So, again, guys, this happens. Um, I, I deal with it all the time, you know, and I've dealt with people who, I bought their phones, you know, the first round was great. They did everything they had to do. And the next time it just was bad. They didn't, they didn't ship the phone off in time. They didn't communicate with me like they did the first time. Um, I get the phone. It's not the phone that they invoiced me for. All these different things happen when you're, when you're buying. Um, and as a buyer, I can tell you guys that it's painful. Um, and I can only imagine, you know, what, you know, the top buyers are doing or, or what they're going through. Um, having, you know, thousands of units a week and these same, you know, sellers, you know, not doing uh, good business. So hopefully you guys find some value in this video. Um, hopefully I, you know, covered everything, but I'm just letting you guys know for those who do have buyers or so, uh, those who are seeking buyers or just, you know, just trying to get some extra information about it. These tips should help you guys. If you do enjoy the video, please drop a like. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.